Khan Company was founded in 2004 by the CEO, currently Daniel Lubetsky. According to Fortune, his father was a survivor of the Holocaust, and he took the values his father taught him into the company he created today. He began the company as a one-man team in charge of packaging, marketing, and everything involved. According to Hoover's, he believed that the product should be created with ingredients you can see and pronounce. And not only would these be made with the best ingredients, but the product itself would spread more kindness as being a healthy snack with true and unfiltered ingredients. So key events in the timeline of Kind Healthy Snack Bar's history involve in 2008, VMG, the private equity firm, invested an undisclosed amount in the company to help it match its goals with its products. The company was struggling matching its healthy image and pure image with the ingredients going into its bars. This involved slow growth and low sales for many years. Then in 2010, they hired their current president, John Lee, to help uh, current CEO, David Lubetsky, deal with these issues. And even though they had all this manpower and financial success now, they still had ongoing FDA issues. And according to an article by Fast Company, these issues involved the FDA claiming that healthy snack bars were not actually healthy according to FDA standards. And this is a current issue that still goes on with Kind now. But even with these issues, they have gone forward. And now they're, they've rose from 30 employees in 2004 to 600 plus employees currently. With Kind Healthy Snack Bar's current growth model, they're expected to grow continually, and we'll discuss this later in the presentation. Mr. Lubetsky, it's a pleasure to meet you. We look forward to getting to know you and your company and helping you guys out. I've heard a lot of good things about you. It's a pleasure to finally meet you guys. Um, I don't know if you saw from my uh, company history presentation I gave you guys already, but uh, we're growing a lot. And an issue we have with Kind is matching this growth with our culture and our mission. And we've grown over 425% company headcount over the past few years. And that also comes with growth in sales as well. We have 190 million since 2010 in growth. So the issue is we need to match our product quality with this growth as well. And the biggest thing, of not just product quality, is our missions and our goals. And what we wanna do is continue with our mission and our goals, even though we're growing at such a rate. And I'm hoping you guys can help me out with that and give me some solutions, because we're not really finding them in kind ourselves. Mr. Lovetsky, it's been a pleasure to meet with you. We look forward to reviewing your financials and getting back to you in a few weeks. By referencing multiple financial websites, including Hoover's, Factiva, Yahoo Finance, and Bloomberg, we were able to get a general estimate of the sales of the private company Kind Healthy Snack Bars since 2010, going every two years. What we found was constant and exponential growth for sales for the company. You can see this by cross-referencing the numbers from 2010 to 2016. It grew from around 10 million in 2010 to over 220 million in dollars in current sales now. The revenues are just a great example of the company growth over time and how it's still expected to grow by continuous expansion. So it's great to see you guys again. I look forward to what you guys have put together over the past few weeks. As consultants, we always want to address a problem from the initial point of contact. Maintaining culture within a company starts from the people you hire. Therefore, as Kind becomes a larger and more prestigious company, we think that it is best to formalize the hiring process to ensure that you not only hire the best candidate, but also a candidate that fits the Kind culture. First of all, you have to look at what type of position you are hiring for. If you are hiring for an executive, we suggest someone with a more type A personality. Someone who shows ambition, competitiveness, and is willing to make tough decisions. While if you are hiring a lower level employee, we want you to hire someone who is very attentive to detail, hardworking, and has great communication skills that make them an all around great team player. The 
few ways that you can test for these personalities are through constructive interview questions, creating case studies to be performed during the interviews, vetting employees by their alignment with company ideals, much like the hiring process used by Zappos, another company that highly values culture. In addition, we recommend that you have each candidate take a Myers-Briggs personality test. This test is widely used to classify respondents as extroverted or introverted, sensing or intuitive, thinking or feeling, and judging or perceiving. Through these variety of tests, you should be able to align candidates with open positions within your company. Sam, thank you for addressing the hiring process. Mr. Lubetsky, I now want to address the organizational structure we recommend. Over the past two weeks, we've determined the best organizational structure for kind is mechanistic with centralized decision-making for important decisions that require a large sum of money. However, at the functional level, people who do the day-to-day -day dirty work will work as a cross-functional team that is decentralized, allowing team members that are hands-on with the products, marketing, and sales to adapt on the fly and be more efficient. The benefit of this organization is that it gives each group a clear decision-maker via the mechanistic hierarchy that comes with it. But at the same time, it keeps culture by keeping everyone at the functional level involved and voices heard. Team members on the floor will sit horizontally with those who have the same job title, as I'll turn it over to Johnny here and he'll explain more. Thanks, Lewis. Let's move on and talk about how we think we can help Kind maintain their culture. Uh, some points that we've come up with are every morning, each office in the company will have a stand up where they go through important news events going on in the office and introduce new faces. Following the office meeting, each team will then break off and have horizontal team meetings where the team leader will update the progress and current goals and set goals for that day. And if anyone needs help, they can help them there. Uh, in addition, there's a cross -functional there will be cross-functional meetings in the morning where members from each product line, like Kind Bar, Strong Kind, or Pressing Kind, will come together for example, kind, strong, and kind more, the product manager, the salesperson, the marketing person, and anyone else associated will all meet together. Uh, going back to what Lewis said, we'll have team members in the office sit horizontally with people in the same job title. So we'll have marketing, fitness, marketing, and sales, and sales, and so on, to allow uh, team members, those team members with similar skills to bounce ideas off each other and assist, assist each other if need be. Moving on, in addition to team meetings, we have morale boosting events. One example would be each team will have a goal to give out 20 random acts of kindness promotion slips, much like they do now to the public. As well, one, each team will have to do one community service trip or event per quarter to build team chemistry. A second idea would be to bring in speakers once a week for what we call a kind talk. This talk could be about culture, about what's going on in the office, or simply something cool that's going on in the food industry. Another thing that would be a good idea would be company team building events and competitions, such as new hire training at the headquarters in New York, office ping pong tournaments, or simply a weekly happy hour. As well, another thing we came up with, something as a company grows would be beneficial, would be to create a happiness team. This happiness team would be composed of two to three full-time employees whose jobs would be to simply not take time away from those people who do the day-to-day -day work. Their job would be to order pizza for pizza days, or schedule that happy hour, or make that ping pong tournament. So I appreciate all your guys' advice and everything, but uh, there's a few problems that I could see in our company and your guys' advice. And the number one issue really being is that time. So everything you guys have put forward is very time consuming, and in our industry, time is money. So I want you guys to kind of give me the benefits versus the costs of your thing, because we're gonna be giving up a lot of time to restructuring your organization to your guys' new values. So if you could just give me some feedback on why is this really worth it for our time. Ms. Lebeski, I first want to thank you for your concern. As far as your concern about time, we're to continue and maintain our company culture, talent can be absorbed from other departments. This is of course expected due to our large scale suggestion. Uh, the time that was previously uh, dedicated to other departments will be used to implement a series of team body activities, which we believe will help maintain and continue to develop your company culture. 
and this is by my uh, associate John. However, preserving company culture goes beyond that. As mentioned by Lewis, we also suggest a systematic alteration in regards to a leadership hierarchy. With the growth of the company, it is important to create a clear line of leadership while also allowing team members the discretion of making own decisions to maximize efficiency. Lastly, as mentioned by Sam, implementing a personality test into the vetting process and new employees will funnel those only of kind caliber into your company. Overall, the time sacrifice and the money sacrifice we believe will translate to a prestigious culture at kind being kept and maintained. So thank you for your time. It's always a pleasure to